Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? This is Richard Karn from Home Improvement, and I am very excited to introduce your next speaker. Now, I heard this guy is going to talk about, well, aviation mechanics. I got a tool belt. I got the experience. Sign me up. Or rather, I have the experience, but maybe not all of the learning that you guys need to go through, because this is an important thing. This is a very important thing. Your speaker is the Senior Vice President of Business Development at King Schools. So let me welcome Brian Huff. And remember, it's not necessarily more power that keeps you in the air. It's keeping that power fixed and ready to go. Good luck. All right. Knowing that I'm one of the speakers that's between you and the cocktail social, uh, we're going to keep this brief, but we're going to keep it a little bit humorous. And uh, with my PowerPoint, we talked about, we're going to talk about aviation maintenance. Okay, one of the topics that I'm going to get into um, is the overwhelming demand. And that's one thing that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about our course, talk about a few things. You guys got it? All right, and I apologize, that's the only better picture I could have. But uh, yeah, my information, I'm gonna have it here at the end and uh, I'm available for any questions or uh, guest appearances. As I've told everybody before, I've been told I've got a face for radio. So talked about the mechanic shortage. Those of you that are familiar with the study that Boeing Aircraft puts out, that's the pilot and technician report. Many of us for years, myself included, only looked at the pilot side of that, okay? Well, did you actually know that the maintenance side of that is 690,000 over the next 10 years? It's 41,000 more new mechanics are needed than pilots. 41,000, okay? Two things to think about. One, what is that gonna do to our industry when we don't have enough mechanics, okay? That's gonna be a critical blow. The second part is my business development mind starts thinking, how can we make that profitable for us? Okay, all of you are flight school owners. How many of you have a maintenance shop? Okay, well, bear that in mind because you've got another revenue generator right at your own shop that can help solve this particular problem. So the problem we talked about currently, there's limited number of maintenance training facilities. So you want to become an A&P, you look this up, within a certain state that you guys reside, there may only be one or two training options. These are limited, they're brick and mortar options. So what that does is that limits me to somebody that doesn't have a family, doesn't have a full-time job, okay, and brings you usually into that 18 to 20 something category for a student that would pursue this because they've got a full-time job. Okay, they've got son's soccer game, daughter's recital, they cannot unplug from this. So how do they do it? Okay, and so we've got to think outside of the box versus just the brick and mortar. So, and the way that we do that is with King's new online A&P course, online. Those of you that are familiar with the new FAA 147 ACS, that just came out now permits online instruction in a 147 environment. Those of you that are familiar with 147 in the past, the 1900 contact hours all had to be face to face. That is not the case any longer. Thus the launch of this particular program. So you can apply for a 147 approval, the hours are gone. Under 147, this is proficiency based. So you write up an op spec, very similar to a TCO. The op spec is going to have your curriculum and what you're going to do, and you're gonna submit that to the FISDO, gain 147 approval, 
Okay, so that's the first part that could get you excited if you want to use 147. You're familiar with 141, 147, very similar. Instead of a, uh, you know, your POI, you're going to have a PMI, okay? Very much uh, similar to what you guys are talking about. But online ground school, 147, okay? Apprenticeships. How does this work? How can we do this? Okay, you may have heard people talk about if somebody takes our online ground course, which meets all of the ground requirements for 147, it has integrated tasks with the completion standard and it's set up with learner center grading. Those of you that are already using our CTA program for all of your flight training, this is built in CTA. The app will work, the login will work, you're gonna do practice, perform, manage, just the same, get down to the end of the A&P, and your uh, student are going to sign off on these lessons. For the apprentice, rather than completing a 147 curriculum, an apprentice can just come to you and complete 18 hours of training to test out on two courses, or third, I'm sorry, 18 months of training to test out on two courses. So general and one more, so either airframe or power plant, or complete 30 months of training to do all three. So when I say training, this is understudy work underneath an A&P. So you're going to work in your shop as an apprentice and people had said, well, where does this bring in the money? How does this work for me? Well, what are you charging for a flight instructor? Think about that. So our course requires 500 hours of tasks that need to be completed while um, they're going through this. So when you start thinking about the revenue that you could make, you could charge $70, $80 an hour, something like that when your a and is out there. But once this a and is comfortable with this student, they can show up and do that. When you tell that student, go ahead and change the oil on this, change the tire on this one, do that. They're still working under that a and but as an apprentice. And so now it allows for part-time people to come into a local flight school because where there may have been, and I'm hypothetically coming up with the number of two or three brick and mortar locations to train mechanics in your state, how many flight schools are there? we've just exploded the possibility. So these particular um, schools that are now out there, we could have 50 of them in the state that are now training mechanics. So if you were just to pick up one or two that are working in your maintenance shop, okay, you get an apprentice that's out there, not only are they working for you for free, they're actually paying you to get trained out there, so you get additional help out in your maintenance shop while you're doing this. So this is um, what we've got. Students have lifetime access to the course. We have free e-signature, electronic record keeping. Difference between 147 and OJT, 147 is much like 141. They're gonna get a graduation certificate. You're the one that's gonna sign them off that they're ready for the written, for the check ride, and so on. OJT, they're going to have to prepare a log and take that to the FISDO and prove to the FISDO that they have the 18 months or the 30 months to do that. CTA does that for you. So when a student is doing the training in CTA and they've accumulated the tasks signed off by their a and and it's ready to go, this particular course, they just go in there and export, print, or save it as PDF, take that to the FISDO, we've done all their work for them. The FISDO's gonna look at this, yep, okay, here's your clearance to test. Built into this is also the written test preparer. So much like you're using the flight courses, you're very familiar that we have the tests that they can prepare for. So your airframe, power plant, general, and all of our apps work with it. So you're familiar with the test prep app that has the flashcard and written tests and everything that works on the app, works the same with this. So we just expanded the exact same thing that we've, um, that we've mastered for the flight side and utilizing this. So who's it perfect for? Colleges and universities that have aviation programs, okay? Um, 
everybody in the room, it's no secret, I came from Liberty University. I started the flight training affiliate program that had multiple locations across the country. 147 never permitted remote operations. It does now. With an online, if you had a 147 location at your flight school, you could partner with other flight schools and use an online curriculum that you're able to monitor via CTA and meet all of your OPSPEX requirements. So now, not just your location, you can actually open up and partner with other flight schools with their maintenance shops and make this work even more. So there's a lot of things that you can do and think about. That's the college side of it that many colleges are looking into. How do we do this? How can we make this, how can we set this up? So we expand, talk about aviation maintenance training schools. This is how do we get into part-time people coming, okay? Maybe they can cut back a couple days a week, but they can't afford to come five or six days a week for this particular training because they've got other commitments. The one thing, the success for the Liberty program when I was there is I made the decision that I wanted to target an audience that nobody else had gone after yet. Your colleges, most of your flight schools, and the, these fast track programs were brick and mortar. They were, a t they were going after the college age youth, that 18 to 24 range. What I wanted to target was the 30 to 40 something career changer. Got out of the military, maybe has that full time welding job, has a family, I mentioned son's soccer game, daughter's recital, other commitments. They can't unplug from that and go full time to some maintenance shop. So in other words, this is a career that they wanted, but it's out of reach. So what we did with the Liberty program, online curriculum, partner with a flight school that's right down the road that they go to two or three times a week around their schedule. This gives you that exact same business opportunity. Now they have an online curriculum and they're gonna work in your maintenance shop when you schedule them. And guess what, you already have the resource. You have some type of a flight scheduling item, make your A&P a resource that they can schedule time with that particular A&P in the maintenance shop. So you, now your brains are kind of churning, thinking about how this is going to potentially work. FBOs, okay. There's multiple FBOs out there that have maintenance shops. Part 145s, MROs, airlines. So this is one, I, I know we've got one in the back, but uh, what I've talked to a few different airlines and had two different webinars recently with the airlines. Guess what? They can do internships too. We just got off the phone with United that has 17 training locations, wants an online curriculum to do just this. They're gonna do OJT training using um, this particular curriculum and to do to launch this, you know, across a vast area. But multiple airlines need mechanics. They can do the same thing at a small scale to a large scale. And so these are things that um, we're passing along to the airlines. You can be part of that because the other side is we talk high school STEM. You guys hear this over and over and over, and how do we do it? We have high schools that call us and will ask me, well, I don't know how to do it. I've got, we've got our board that's pushing us and saying, we need to do more STEM. We need to get into aviation. We need to make this work. How do we do it, Brian? And the idea is, I said, well, let's take the crawl, walk, run approach. Immediately, they're looking into the price of all this equipment and it's gonna cost them a couple million dollars for all this equipment that they have to build out this particular shop. I said, let's back up a little bit. You know, two miles down the road is a flight school. You've got those nice uh, yellow buses. Why don't you do a classroom with an online curriculum as your textbook, talk about a few things there, and then two days a week, go down to the flight school. Do a contract with that flight school that already has all of this stuff and you slow roll this so that our goal is, hey, over a year, over a year and a half, we're gonna get through general. Then we're gonna move on to something after that. But the, you can take these high school students. In order to test, they have to be 18 years old. Okay, that's fine. 
but we can go through general and airframe and all of the ground study, all the tasks and anything that we want to before that time. So they're apprenticing. So you set this up with a particular school and do that handshake and you can make this thing work. And then that's one way that by the time they're 18, they can test, they can graduate high school and go right into a maintenance career. We've solved the problem. So these are some ways that we can put a huge dent in the need for the mechanics so that they don't bring our planes to a screeching halt. So we talked about um, college and university, how our course tracking application works and the home study course. And it allows the, um, those of you that are familiar with our course tracking application, it's, it allows anybody to log in and see the student's progress, not only in the home study course, but you can look at all the tasks that are there. And if you're re using remote locations as well, you can see how somebody's actually doing at the remote site. So all the comments and everything that's going on, it'll work out well. So the course is built to the 147 requirements because that's what the check ride is. So it'll work under 147, but it still covers every element that's in the ACS if they use OJT. So it's the exact same course. The only thing that's different is the audit for completion standards for both. So I mentioned the 18 months for two, 30 months for three is the requirement, okay? Now, full-time, part-time, there's no distinction, okay? The regulation doesn't state that if for it to be 18 months, you have to go five days a week when you're there, okay? It's, it's vague enough that, you know, technically, I don't know if they'd push back, but technically, if you had one activity in a month, it counts as an act a month. So, you know, so it gives you a little bit of latitude on the uh, particular regulation. So, the, uh, um, talked about the career changers, part-time curriculum is a big thing that we can go after. And uh, 145s, FBOs, and MROs. So, this is what I talked about, is you get to sell this particular course, okay? Our course, everybody's gonna ask how much, okay, 595. It's the retail price of this maintenance course, okay? It's one course with three phases. So rather than me selling you general, then selling you airframe, then selling you power plant, it's one course that covers it all. So it's a little bit more than the normal flight course, but that's the 595. Everyone in here that is buying courses from us or anything like that gets 40% off. So your price is 40% off of that. So you can sell it for $5.95 at your particular school, and you're gonna make that delta right away. When I said invoice them for the time with your A&Ps, I said I just used maybe $70 an hour. Some of you are above that, some of you are below that, but this is something that you're already used to, okay? 500 hours of tasks that are within this particular program over that 30-month period. $35,000 additional revenue per student. Imagine if you did two of these a year. I know when I ran a flight school what my you know, net margin was at the end of the year, okay? This, you already have the resources. So it's not costing you extra to do a couple of these. You can go large scale, okay, and do, do larger classes, but you could do one or two and put a big dent in it. And, and help, and if we had, I mean, King, we work with 350 flight schools. If I got half of them to do this, imagine the dent that we'd put in that A&P need and the demand. And that's where my mind is going. We talked about airlines and the apprenticeships and, uh, and so on with that. I kind of spoke ahead a little bit, so we're gonna click through this and my hour presentation will be done in record time and everybody can cheer. So, um, so we talk about uh, discounts. For those of you that are already, when I use the term and I started it in my opening uh, monologue this morning, partners, okay? When I say that you're a partner, it means that we're equally yoked. My success is your success, so I want to see you succeed. That's why I'm up here talking about ways that are going to make you more money. Yeah, we're going to make a little bit of money off of this. You're going to make money off of it, but globally it's going to help everybody because every flight school that I've gone to has always asked me, you know any mechanics? We need mechanics. We're short mechanics, okay? Well, now you're going to train your own. 
and you're going to have interns that are there. And so the discounts that you get on the particular course, you get electronic record keeping, same as all of the flight, student progress and mistracking, the applications, test and flashcard, and access to the online ordering portal, which um, is, is actually my presentation tomorrow. But those of you that aren't using that yet, okay, just for being a partner, we give you access to a login where you can purchase all 115 of our courses at your 40% discount. Okay, so this backs up to, if you remember back pilot shops and back when we were on DVD and VHS, you could buy these from us, put them in your pilot shop and different things like that. Well, now when everything's gone digital, because by the time you print any textbook, it's out of date because the FAA changes their mind or removes something and so on. So it's all digital with lifetime access, but now we're giving it back to you that you can sell it. So a and courses, FERCs, drone courses, um, these check ride courses that I just put out there. So anything you find on our website is now available to you. The partner portal is available to everyone in here. If you do not know what the partner portal is, that's you want to see my presentation tomorrow. And our customer service team, if you don't know what your login is, what your access is, um, you can... Um, Talk to the folks in the back or the customer service team that we've got here. They'll be able to look that up and help you. So a lot of stuff. I, I really breeze through it, but we're giving you this as a sample course that is in the booklet. Okay, so you've got a code that's in there that one of them that lists all the checkride courses and the maintenance course. For those of you that have CTA access already, um, that code can be registered in CTA and you're gonna see the behind the scenes that I was talking about. That it'll pop up all of the tasks, what the completion standard is and everything else, just like you register a flight student. Just register yourself and you'll see that side of it. So, um, and anybody, if you need us to walk through it a little bit more, different things like that, we're certainly happy to. If you're not partnered with us um, and want to, talk to me. We can get you set up with CTA for free, and this could be something that you're, you're ready to do. So there's, there's no long contracts, there's no commitments, there's nothing like that. So, I mean, we just, you know, want to work with you for success. So with that, I'm done. Question? Yes. It is, it is active now. It, we launched it officially at AirVenture. Yes. You will have a director of maintenance that, that is in your op specs, same, similar to a chief instructor. The person that's gonna be responsible for records and signing people off is you're gonna to have to come up with that particular person. So, depends, it's, think of OJT as part 61 and 147 as 141. So, it works very much sim the same. Well, I mean, you could do it with one mechanic. Um, you may want more. Again, is that what you're talking about? Correct. So your, your question, if I'm understanding it correctly, was the kind of the operational hierarchy under 147 and the staff that are needed? Well, it, and again, there's nothing in writing that has a stipulation of that. So the idea, talking about the hierarchy, you will need a director of maintenance that's gonna be ultimately the signing a responsible 
person for the op spec that's approved for the 147. Your number of mechanics that are down under that um, is something that you're gonna present, much like you write a TCO, I can write a TCO for 35 hours or 50 hours, you're gonna sell this particular program that you've got to your, um, your, your PMI and then say that, okay, we have one mechanic, okay, but we're not going to exceed two students or, or something like that because they understand that mechanic has normal duties that they're going to have, but then now you're giving them some side work, okay, to do some instruction with some duties. So how many, how many students, you know, in theory can they handle? Different things to think about. So you, you may want to grow um, some of those. The, the difference is, yes, that part has to be approved, and it's probably best if you want to start under the OJT side and kind of get your feet wet and, and plan out, okay, how do we do it? Because you don't have the oversight there. You're just seeing, okay, how many students can my one mechanic handle before you actually write your op spec and then try to change it? So crawl, walk, run approach. Yes. When you're saying time for the student, yes. um, I, I think the, uh, the the question for the the people in the back that didn't hear it is uh, completion time. So I mentioned the 18 months, 30 months of the requirement on OJT um, on 147 to go through all the particular elements. I've had schools that will complete someone in 12 months. I've had some that will complete in 24 months. That's their current uh, curriculum for, uh, you know, the AMTS schools that are out there now. Um, they still have to be proficient for the same check ride. So again, it's much like a 61 versus 141. They, they're both taking an ACS check ride. So it's, it's two paths to get here. Um, it's they just removed the time requirements that used to be there under 147 and now it's proficiency based so that was the the main difference so you may find that you know 24 months for a normal maintenance school well you're okay with 30 okay and the thing is is after 18 months if they test with general and airframe they have a license they can start working on their own Okay, and meanwhile, what they can do is they can continue to gather the rest of the time under a mechanic that's there, but they test on those two, they can work independently. So that's the, they give you that, that section. And the other one that I didn't bring up in here that's another uh, category that definitely is coming up is military. So we have an awful lot of military that are, are, that are downsizing, we're bringing people home. Military crew chiefs, okay, can use that experience that they have in the military to log towards those 18 or 30 months. Problem is, they're not spooled up on the FAA regulations or the written tests or anything like that yet. So this is where you come in. So with them, we go OJT, okay, they may have their 18 or 30 months. You could run them through you know, a month in your maintenance shop just going through the task, making sure they understand it. They take this online course and boom, you've, you turn one around in fast time. So that time can be commingled because it just says experience you know, uh, as a mechanic, if that answers the question. So very good questions. I guess it's a, it's, it's a good topic. So uh, I understand that this might be different depending on every school and if they have a maintenance shop, but could you kind of walk us through, uh, we put this out somehow and somebody walks in the door and says, yes, I want to become a mechanic. What, what are the steps for, for that particular under OJT? What, what, what should we be expecting to explain to them, assuming we have a maintenance shop, an AMP and all that? Well, it'd be very similar to someone coming through your door uh, and saying, I want to become a pilot. So you're going to sell them the, uh, you know, uh, private pilot course, and they're going to go through a curriculum. This is set up as a online curriculum that's going to do all of the general knowledge, all the airframe knowledge, all of the PowerPoint knowledge, and it has written test prep and everything built into it. So all of the knowledge is there. 
So now what you've got is you have all of the tasks that there's, there's over 500 tasks that they have to be ready, prepared, and understand under ACS. So some of these, they can do multiple tasks in a day, okay? Because you're, when you do one thing, like you know, change a tire, you, you actually complete like five tasks, okay? With all the different things when you're talking bearings, and I, I'm not an A&P, but I can talk to this. So those are some of the things that you're gonna run into as you're gonna complete the tasks. Um, and you just wanna make sure that you go through this. So the speed that you're gonna go through the 500 is, you know, based on does that particular student live at the airport? Or are they there all the time? Um, you know, are they, is it an incentive? Do you have a line person that wants to move into the maintenance shop? You know, I'd give them a course and say, you know, this is something now we can have you work towards your A&P or something like that while you're there. Um, you know, how do, how do you market it? How do we, you know, go after something? Um, it's, it's a new field. Uh, I, I wish it would get out there because we all know how expensive uh, airline, uh, you know, your pilot training is, okay? And, you know, it's a good career at the end. These mechanics have got very good careers. Many of the regionals, you look out there, the regionals, um, I mean, I don't want to speak for PSA, we'll let them do it. Most of them are offering very lucrative pay for starting mechanics. Some of them are even offering hiring bonuses. I've even had some of them offer toolboxes and tool kits. Um, the, uh, when I was at Liberty, it's they, what they set up is the, uh, the airline came in with tool kits, fully stocked, and had the airline logo on these kits, okay, that were, that were there. Trick was you got to use that all through your training, and then as long as you came to that particular airline, you got to bring it with. If you didn't, it had to stay at the school. So it was a recruiting effort for them, and they actually, I mean, they were getting like 99% of those, uh, you know, cadets. But there's things that you can reach out to like that, and I know there's, there's rebates and kickbacks and things like that that are there. Um, I, I put out an email during our, our presser at Sun, or I'm sorry, at AirVenture when we launched this. The FAA is hot on this, and they offered grants that actually closed last month that you could, schools could get up to half a million dollars for the advancement of a and programs. This is something, if you have not filed for an FAA grant, you need to, it's free money. So if you went and put together some, some grant proposal and you submitted it and said, I'm working with local high schools, we're doing this online curriculum, we've got a satellite location, imagine what you could do with half a million dollars. And there's a lot of schools that, that got it, but it was publicly posted out there and very few people that actually received it. Same thing actually goes live for the flight side working with high school programs. So. Can you speak a little bit about the TCO portion of, of this and the approval that's needed? Yeah, the, it's under a maintenance 147, it's not called a TCO, it's called an op spec, okay? And the op spec, I have, um, there's, I, I have examples that I can share. The, uh, um, there's also other entities that are out there. For example, um, if any of you are familiar with ATAC, okay, they actually for like a hundred bucks will sell you a sample uh, op spec that, you know, so you can see that just like a sample, that's actually, I'm not gonna lie, I paid for it, that's the one I've got. So that, you know, I can share with people, but that's where I get that and, and can show you that this is what the op spec is and how it's outlined. So um, you're gonna, you know, submit that. It just, it's much like the TCO. This is how we're gonna complete the curriculum. But um, exciting conversation, great questions. You know, for me to be like, the, starting just after lunch, I'm, I'm amazed. And, but that you see that this is something that we started long before the ACS uh, change came out. As soon as we got the NPRM where they were coming up with these changes and we saw some of the things that online training was gonna be available now, my mind started going into overdrive. That, you know, many of you have flight schools with multiple locations. Okay. This is something that you know you can expand and use at multiple locations. Or if you're a university and you're seeking, you know, with like I did with Liberty, with multiple locations. For example, Liberty should be salivating over this because it's they had 88 training partners, so they already have a 147 center. They can use this 
and, and do training immediately at the remote sites under 147. So it's proficiency based. It gives so much more uh, that's there. So uh, I know that there's a, there's a lot of topics, a lot of questions. Um, I think the next button push is, well, I spammed all of you. You've got my, my email, my phone number, my cell phone, call me. Okay, I'll, I'll walk through this and uh, um, be, be more than happy to uh, um, you know, share this or uh, what I've done with some is let's do a Teams meeting. Okay, if you wanna do something with your director of maintenance uh, or something like that, you know, I'll walk through this with them and uh, talk through the process and what we can do and, and uh, you know, baby steps. So, Rock. flight schools to do maintenance, maybe except on their own aircraft. This may be an opportunity for the flight schools to get a, um, an entry point into the MX side under their lease agreement um, for what that's worth. I, I think I understand the first part of that. You said a lot of the lease back agreements do not allow the flight school to do maintenance? Everybody that operates a flight school has a lease on an airport. And the lease specifically states what you can and cannot do. Many times, a flight school does not have the right to do MRO at all, let alone um, on their own aircraft, or they may be limited to their own aircraft. But this may be an opportunity to open up a discussion with the airport sponsor who has been restricting the flight school from doing MRO because of this new program. I agree, that's uh, yeah. definitely a good topic. Just out of a, a, a poll that's in here, out of our flight schools, um, how many of you have your own maintenance facilities? So it's, uh, um, how many of you contract with somebody else? Okay. And the, even the fact that you contract, this may be something that could be done, um, you know, with that. But um, so, I, excellent topic. I love it. Obviously, you see the passion. This was kind of a brainchild of mine. So uh, it's it's the first um, fully integrated online A and P course that's come to market, and we're proud of it. We hope you guys are able to utilize it. So, thank you for your time.